and welcome to St. Thomas the Apostle Catholic Church. Tonight we are celebrating the liturgy for the sixth Sunday in Ordinary Time. The readings can be found in the Green Hymnal at number 943. And as a reminder before Mass begins, please take a minute to just turn off your electronic devices so as not to disturb our service. Our celebrant tonight is Father Adrian Cook and he is being assisted by Deacon David Hicks. Please rise and join in our gathering song number 760 as we gather at your table. Once again, we gather in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, as we approach the table of the Lord, grateful for his invitation to us, we are nonetheless aware of our unworthiness and pause to ask God's forgiveness. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call all sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
Let us pray. O oh Lord, O oh God, who teach us that you abide in hearts that are just and true, grant that we may be so fashioned by your grace as to become a dwelling place pleasing to you. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit as God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Sirach. If you choose, you can keep the commandments. They will save you. If you trust in God, you too shall live. He has set before you fire and water. To whichever you choose, stretch forth your hand. Before man are life and death, good and evil. Whichever he chooses shall be given him. Immense is the wisdom of the Lord. He is mighty in power and all-seeing. The eyes of God are on those who fear him. He understands man's every deed. No one does he command to act unjustly, for none does he give license to sin. The word of the Lord. Oh. 
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, we speak a wisdom to those who are mature, not a wisdom of this age, nor of the rulers of this age who are passing away. Rather, we speak God's wisdom, mysterious, hidden, which God predetermined before the ages for our glory, and which none of the rulers of this age knew. For if they had known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, what eye has not seen and ear has not heard, and what has not entered the human heart, what God has prepared for those who love him, this God has revealed to us through the Spirit. For the Spirit scrutinizes everything, even the depths of God. The word of the Lord. Lord be with you. And A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have come not to abolish, but to fulfill. Amen, I say to you, until heaven and earth pass away, not the smallest letter or the smallest part of a letter will pass from the law until all things have taken place. Therefore, whoever breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do so will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever obeys and teaches these commandments will be called greatest in the kingdom of heaven. I tell you, unless your righteousness surpasses that of the scribes and the Pharisees, you will not enter the kingdom of heaven. You have heard that it was said to your ancestors, you shall not kill, and whoever kills will be liable to judgment. But I say to you, whoever is angry with his brother will be liable to judgment. Whoever says to his brother, Raka, will be answerable to the Sanhedrin. And whoever says, you fool, will be liable to fiery Gehenna. Therefore, if you bring your gift to the altar, and there recall that your brother has anything against you. Leave your gift there at the altar. Go first and be reconciled with your brother, and then come and offer your gift. Settle with your opponent quickly while on the way to court. Otherwise, your opponent will hand you over to the judge, and the judge will hand you over to the guard, and you will be thrown in prison. Amen, I say to you. You will not be released until you have paid the last penny. You have heard that it was said you shall not commit adultery. But I say to you, everyone who looks at a woman with lust has already committed adultery in her, with her in his heart. If your right eye causes you to sin, tear it out and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one of your members than to have your whole body thrown into Gehenna. And if your right hand causes you to sin, Cut it off and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one of your members than to have your whole body go into Gehenna. 
It was also said, whoever divorces his wife must give her a bill of divorce. But I say to you, whoever divorces his wife, unless the marriage is unlawful, causes her to commit adultery, and whoever marries a divorced woman commits adultery. Again, you have heard that it was said to your ancestors, do not take a false oath, but make good to the Lord all that you vow. But I say to you, do not swear at all, not by heaven, for it is God's throne, nor by the earth, for it is his footstool, nor by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. Do not swear by your head, for you cannot make a single hair white or black. Let your yes mean yes, and your no mean no. Anything more is from the evil one. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Our first reading talks about the law of God and how following God's law is the key to a good life. Our responsorial psalm, blessed is he who follows the law of the Lord. Um, in Judaism, from its beginnings with Moses and entering into the covenant, had two basic elements which were required in order to live lives pleasing to God. One was following the law of God, and the other was sincere acts of worship, of sacrifice. Those two elements are you know, basic, fundamental to Judaism from its very beginning. We, we Catholics and a lot of Christians, when we think of the law of God, we jump right to the Decalogue, the Ten Commandments, which in actuality serve as an introduction, more or less, to the law of God. But The Jewish notion of, of the law <laughs> didn't stop there, but goes on and on throughout not only the rest of the book of Exodus, but in the, uh, Leviticus, Deuteronomy. <laughs> uh, and then, of course, in addition to the law, the Torah, and sacrifice, there eventually comes in the works of the prophets and the books of wisdom that kind of flesh things out and uh, give the people even more insights, if you will, into how to live in a way that pleases God and into the very wonder of God. By the time of the Lord's ministry, there had been so much interpretation of the law and pontificating on, you know, how to exactly fulfill every, not only the law, but every statute and direction and precept and uh, interpretation. Uh, the scribes and Pharisees were particularly known for this. And they had gone from simple altars and sacrifice, you know, manufactured on the spot by rolling rocks together uh, and sacrificing a lamb or something turtle doves, other such, as, and then the first fruits. It had gone to building a temple, uh, 
an evolution of the idea of priesthood and having high priests and the Levites and, uh, and sacrifices going on in the temple every day, but especially during you know the high holy days, and all kinds of uh, intricate rituals. It had to be done just right. There had to be ritual cleansings beforehand, and et cetera, et cetera. But the mainstays were, of course, the law and sacrifice. When it comes to the law, Jesus summed it up once. He said, when he asked uh, a young person in the audience who was asking him, you know, for spiritual direction, he says, well, uh, what does the law say? And the man responds with what is known as the Shema Israel. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord God is one, and you shall have no other and you shall love the Lord your God with all your mind and all your heart. And then Jesus says, and the second is like it. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. And then he says, and this is summed up the whole of the law and the prophets. Now, Jesus doesn't say this, but as for sacrifice, Jesus gave to his Father the perfect sacrifice once and for all. So in a sense, we live by the same two basic foundations of true faith and religion, of faithfulness to God. The law, which Jesus has summed up for us, Love of God and love of each other. He goes beyond saying uh, that we should love others as we want to be loved. Eventually, the night before he dies, he tells his apostles and us that we're to love each other as he loves us brings it up to a whole new level. In the Gospel of Matthew, just before tonight's uh, selection, we hear Jesus give his commentary, what part of his commentary, on proper moral living, what we call the Beatitudes, the Sermon on the Mount, of which today's reading is part. We are blessed, basically, when we are a blessing to others. That is our law. That we love God wholeheartedly, and we show that love by our love for one another, which will never be perfect, either one of them. I mean, we'll never love one another as Jesus loves us. But that's what we have to strive for. And then, as we approach the sacrifice, the perfect sacrifice, represented to us, uh, not done again and again, one different sacrifice, one after another, but the one perfect sacrifice made present to us over and over again. We are to join in heart and mind, not only with one another, with the church, but we join ourselves to this perfect sacrifice of Jesus Christ. And in this, we are nourished to go out from here to more faithfully live the law of love. My homily wasn't much longer than your reading of the gospel. <laughs> we tried to, we gave him a week off. We got to get, 
get our money's worth out of him now. <laughs> Please stand as we profess our faith together. I believe one, one God, God, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only God and Son, born of the Father before all ages, God of God, light from light, to God from to God, God and not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was granted to the Virgin Mary and became a man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered, died, and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his soon will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. My brothers and sisters, the Lord's Sermon on the Mount provides all of us a clear path on how we should take care of one another. Let us contemplate his words as we pray for the needs of our community and indeed for the whole world. Our prayer response is, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For Pope Francis, Bishop Reka, bishops and priests, that they may continue to be ministers of God's forgiveness and reconciliation. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all governments and peoples of the world, that they may realize the goodness that God has made and work together for the just use of the earth's gifts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who suffer for their faith, that they may fearless, fearlessly withstand all the trials that afflict them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our St. Thomas Parish faith community, that we may seek the life and love of God in all things, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who live under the shadow of death and war, especially those living in Ukraine, that they may experience light, peace, and freedom, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those in our parish book of intentions, the sick, the homebound, the incarcerated, all members of St. Thomas, and the men and women of the armed forces and their families, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the souls in purgatory, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our beloved dead, that they may share in the glory of Jesus' resurrection, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, you have sent your Son, the Word made flesh, to teach us your ways and to lead us into eternal life. Grant us the wisdom to know your law and the courage to be its witness till the end of time. We ask this through Christ the Lord. Amen. As our gifts are brought forward, please join in number 702, the prayer of St. Francis. Mm -hmm.
My brothers and sisters, pray that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. O Lord, may this oblation, we pray, cleanse and renew us, and may it become for those who do your will the source of eternal reward through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body, we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so, together with all the hosts of heaven, we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim... O God, you who love the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love, and when, as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, he broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and, and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again. And we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the offering of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ 
that has been handed on to us. And grant, by the power of the spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. And so, having called us to your table, Lord, confirm us in unity, so that, together with Francis our Pope and Stephen our Bishop, with all bishops, priests, and deacons, and with your entire people, as we walk your ways with faith and hope, we may strive to bring joy and trust into the world. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them, into the, admit them to rejoice in the light of your face and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. And grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There, in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with Joseph, her husband, with the apostles and martyrs, with St. Thomas, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O oh God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, now and forever. Together we pray now, as the Lord himself taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The kingdom, the power, and the glory of now for us. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will. You who live and reign, now and forever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Peace be with you. Thank mm -hmm. you. This is Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. 
Happy are we who have been invited to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof. I only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Please join in our communion hymn tonight, number 780, Bread for the World.
Let us pray. O Lord, having fed upon these heavenly delights, we pray that we may always long for that food by which we truly live through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come upon us all and stay with us forever. Amen. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join in our going forth song number 741, Holy Wisdom, Lamp of Learning.